praise the Lord, you reach past the so hard. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we need you. We need your presence to excel, to permeate, to reveal, to comfort, to guide. to confirm, to authorize that your will will be manifested. We pray, God, that you will have your way over this night. That it will touch throughout eternity. To bring real truths of your love, your unfailing love that comforts, the peace and the joy because of who you are, a greater expectancy for life itself. Teach through your spirit, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to be coming um, Luke 2 4 through 7 and it reads as thus and Jesus also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea and to the city they have, because he was of the house and language of David, to be taxed and married with his wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn and, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the den. No room for them in the end. According to Luke's account, Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem for a census ordered by Caesar Augustus. While they were in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to Jesus in humble circumstances. And they laid him in a manger. There was no room for them in the end. These accounts for Matthew and Luke are the primary biblical references to the birthplace. Jesus, the right. Bethlehem holds significant importance as the birth of the Savior. According to the narrative in Matthew, the wise men or magi came to Jerusalem from the east, following a star that signified the birth of Jesus. They inquired about the location of the newborn king. And King Harold, disturbed by this news, gathered the chief priests and scribes to inquire where Christ was to be born. They referred to the prophecy of Micah 5 mentions 
Bethlehem is the birthplace of Messiah. As we can see in the Bible, that God not only confirms, but he validates, demonstrates, and orchestrates and reveals. the acts, the process, the knowledge, understanding and wisdom of the birth of his son. You see, Micah 2, Old Testament, reads as thus, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Jews, and out of thee shall he, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from ever. This verse is part of the prophet who predicts the coming of a ruler in Israel and specifically mentions Bethlehem as the birthplace of the ruler. The phrase who's going for have been from of old, everlasting, emphasizing the eternal nature of the ruler, suggesting divinity. We quite often theologically as Christians view this verse as a prophecy telling the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Fulfilling the Old Testament in the New. According to the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament, Jesus was indeed born in And this connection is often cited as evidence of the fulfillment of Old Testament and the life of Jesus. No one could have known that Joseph and Mary would be in Bethlehem, but God. And he gave this vision to Micah. who predicted a ruler in Israel and specifically mentions Bethlehem as the birthplace of this ruler. This was a different ruler. And it wasn't one of just a location that would lose its administration. But it was an internal ruler. Resting divinity from everlasting. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratite, Thou be little among the thousands of thee. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to ruler in Israel. Who going forth has been of old from everlasting. Everlasting emphasized the eternal nature of 
identity. Let us look at this one scripture, the prophetic writing from Micah 5 2, that many held on to, not fully understanding the birth. nor the eternity, but expected and hope that it should come forth. Micah was a prophet and in the writings it contains much prophecy addressing judgment and hope for Israel. So it would be fitting that the pathetic verse, Micah 5, would give a glimpse of hope to come. In the context of Micah 5, the chapter begins with a promise of a future ruler who will come from Bethlehem, a seemingly insignificant task. Prophecy specifically mentions Bethlehem, Ephrathah, emphasizing the exact birthplace of the coming ruler. This is significant because Bethlehem was a small town, yet it held a key role in the unfolding of divine events. The prophecy speaks of a ruler who will come forth. In the biblical context, rulers often had political and in some cases, spiritual significance. This prophecy is pointing to a leader who will, be governed, who will govern Israel. The eternal nature who's going forth have been from old, from everlasting. It emphasizes the eternal nature of the coming ruler. This aspect suggests a divine origin and hints at the Messiah's pre-existence before earth birth. Fulfillment in The passage is viewed as a messianic prophecy fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. According to New Testament, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, thus fulfilling the geographical aspect the claim of Jesus' pre-existence and divine nature aligns with the phrase from everlasting is consistent in the deity of Jesus Christ. The significance, the fulfillment of this prophecy as a demonstration of sovereignty and the continuity of his plan throughout the choice of Bethlehem, a humble location, underscores the divine choice and the unexpected nature of God's interventions in human. Micah 5 2 points to the birth of a ruler in Bethlehem, emphasizing both the specific location. and the eternal nature of the future leader. We find the fulfillment in the person of Jesus. The long awaited Messiah and ruler foretold. And Joseph also went out from Galilee, Luke 2, 4. With the city of Nazareth.
I was into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. The scepture should never depart out of the lineage because he was of the house and lineage of David. Be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them. Historical and cultural context, Joseph and Mary are traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census order by Caesar Augustus. Bethlehem as the city of David emphasizes its significance as the birthplace of the expectants as David was the reverend king of Israel. The mention of Joseph's lineage connects the events to the Messianic prophecy regarding the descendant of David. Part of a broader narrative of Jesus' birth in the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel begins with the announcement of the birth of John and Jesus, followed by various events leading to the birth of Jesus. The language used in the passage is simple and straightforward. Linguistic analysis reveals the mention of Joseph going to Bethlehem for the census, Mary being great, and the lack of room in the inn all contribute to the humble and unassuming circumstance of Jesus. The use of the term manger underscores the modern setting and foreshadows the theme of humility and accessibility in Jesus. The theological implication is the passage highlights the fulfillment of prophecy concerning the Messiah's birth in Bethlehem and emphasizes humble nature, Jesus' entry into the world. The use of a manger as a makeshift crib suggests that Jesus, despite being the son, entered the world in lowly circumstances, reinforcing the theme of humility and identification with common. of the scripture Luke 4 through 6 reflects the significance of Jesus' birth humility divine intervention in human history and the fulfillment of humility, divine intervention and the fulfillment of prophecy. Let me repeat that one more time. Humility, divine intervention, And the okay. 
all surrounding Jesus sets the tone for his earthly ministry, characterized by passion and accessibility. regardless of social status. This gave many hope. to hear and see fulfilled. This gives many hope today to celebrate what we consider the birth. that brought hope to a dark world of deception. As we meditate on Jesus Christ, life and all the miracles and workings that he be the compassion the miracle and the hope that he often gives. We also see that he grew in and wisdom. In his early life, a Bible account. The plotting of having him killed, almost similar to Moses, the first of a boy. But yet, they both were protected. that shows God's providential care. When we take heed to his will, he's acting in, in our lives, in the creation that he ruleth over. As Jesus grew in stature and wisdom, the Bible says that he began his public ministry around the age of 30. About the kingdom of God, repentance, love, repentance, and forgiveness. He delivered numerous parables to convey spiritual truths and moral lessons. Jesus performed various miracles, including healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, casting out demons and evil, raising the dead. 
we see much discipleship where he called the twelve to follow and learn from the teaching. They would be later baptized with the Holy Spirit and use and bring peace to further enhance the church. But Jesus didn't just have a controversial inception, although it was not by the will of men, but by the will of God. And Joseph did not put Mary away during the fall, which is the engagement period. He also had a controversial ministry as well. You see, Jesus' teaching and actions often conflict with religious authority. Conflict because his teaching, his compassion, his humility, his divine intervention and fulfillment of prophecy was unlike any other person that has ever walked world. There was question about his ability to criticize for associating with and challenging established religious practices. The Bible talks about his trial and his resurrection. In the final days of his ministry, Jesus entered Jerusalem, an event commemorated on Sunday. He faced trial, was crucified on a cross, and died as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. He rose from the dead on the third day and established the foundation of our country. He ascended after hearing to his disciples for good. After his resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven as recorded in the writings of the past. But before ascending, Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to power and God. Understanding that in order to live in this dark world of deception, there was a greater need of supernatural power. The excellency in which he was carefully vested to empower these earthly vessels and guide them and to light the paths. He empowered and guided his followers towards Spreading the God. They would become living epistles, living stones, living vessels that would show compassion, humility, and accessibility. The love of God. In the early chapter, you see the writings. and many empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that as we look at Jesus' life, the early birth, in his ministry and teaching, in his discipleship and the controversy, his trial, the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, the promise of the Holy Spirit, establishing the pouring of the Holy Spirit. We see a far greater plan that culminated from the prophetic writing of Micah.
and all of the action that Jesus performed. A birth that gave hope in a dark world of shit. Empowered and guided by the Holy. Even today, his legacy continues. His Holy Spirit lives, and so do. And while he sits at the right hand, he continuously intercedes on our behalf. The Bible calls him a priest. That's a tune to our remedy. High priest that knows all about our concern. High priest that shall rule and reign forever. But not any human priesthood that has an end. Bible refers to him as an eternal. An eternal high priest because he's one with no sin. He's one that fulfilled being the mediator, the covenant. There are several passages that gives us the revelation, confirmation, authorization, and information knowledge and understanding of what high priest would fulfill in our life. The Bible says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest that be with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all point, like as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. So also Christ glorified not himself, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son today. Have I begotten thee? Also in a place. I ought a after the order of Mackenzie. Be a high priest. There was certain requirement. Not everyone. So, those requirements. The Bible gives much about the role of high priest. It was a great significance in ancient Israel. The high priest held a central and unique position in the religious and social. Much can be found about the high priest in the writings of the Old Testament, particularly Exodus. Bible says. Jesus being our high priest. 
takes so many roles. You see, the roles and responsibility of a high priest was to be a mediator between God and people. One of the central roles of the high priest was to serve as a mediator. In other words, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle or later in the temple on the day of atonement to make atonement for the sins of the people. This was very significant. To try to mediate, try to bring back and restore the relation yeah, between God and him. The high priest was responsible for ensuring the ritual purity of the people and the sanctuary. This included performing various ceremonies and sacrifices to cleanse the people and the sacred space. The high priest wore special garments designed specifically by God to symbolize the holiness and consecration of the office. God has extended and allowed them. The high priests, they were appointed by divine command and through the authority of ruling authorities. They were often chosen from the descendants of the brother of Moses. A hereditary line of high priests from the of Jesus. But the high priest could not. Do. But Jesus could ultimately feel. So in the writings of Hebrews, we see Jesus Christ as the high priest. Fulfilling what was previously held by humanity as a foreshadow of the eternal divine priesthood. Jesus is described as the ultimate offering himself as an eternal sacrifice for the end. This high priest that Jesus held, divine, eternal leadership, is beyond the ceremonial duties that high priests played in a role in providing spiritual for the people of Israel. You see, they were often concerned with matters of religion and everything. And they were expected to teach them old law and the commandment of God. But Jesus, the high priest, the eternal mediator between God, who completed the sacrificial requirement and became not just our high priest, but our Lord and Savior. Something that the priest could never do. Jesus actually stored 
a right relationship for all with God. He justified and made right. He tore down the veil. He fulfilled everything that the high priest would normally do. He used his blood to sprinkle on the mercy seat. Of the ark as an atonement. A symbolic cleansing upon our life. The shedding of blood as a means of purifying and representing of life offered to God. He took our sins and forgave. That only he could forgive. He became the sacrificial lamb that can forgive and take away the sins of the world. He became a hope in the dark world. Shit. He became a bright morning. The way, the truth, and the light. Restoring relationships with God that will overflow into other relationships. Everything that the that would eventually end, Jesus fulfilled it in a perfect way that his priest would never end. There's no more sin offerings, guilt offerings, burnt offerings. offerings. Jesus fulfilled all the offerings of the law that was often used for atonement. He fulfilled all aspects of addressing sin and period. He held the most critical role in the final atonement. Entering into the holy of holies that only he writes, the one with no sin, could tear down that so that we can enter into when we worship and pray. As we offer up our body, living soul, holy and acceptable. And be not compared by the renewing of our mind. We might know his acceptable as Roman 12. But the blood that gives reminds. That will never lose his power. As opposed to being applied on the doorpost. When he led the Israel. As opposed to being offering. Who sacrificed. He shed his blood. 
as the Lamb of God. To fully make the atonement for all who would receive. Compassion and accessibility to all, no matter what their social is. He's available. Earth that gave hope and a dark world of to fulfill the pathetic foreshadowing the ultimate atonement through the sacrificial death of Jesus. The perfect and eternal sacrifice. No more ceremony. Just communion to remind all a daily spiritual communion to remind all the necessity of a right relationship between them that overflows into others. <laughs> We have so much through this bird. We have so much truth through this bird. We have so much acts through this bird. We have so much authority and knowledge. A birth with humility and divine and fulfilling all prophecies and restoring man back to God. He's the high priest that guides on all matters of life. Legal and ethical use. Our counselor. He's the greatest spiritual lead we could ever. To teach. And the wisdom from above. Rules and rain for and appointment is eternal. He is the rightful owner of all his inheritance as the high priest, the eternal. Identify all who will call upon his holy and righteous name and submit lineage of establishment, a reconciliation with a holy and righteous God. He passed into the heavens, the great high priest, with the exhortation to sit at the right hand of God after completing his earthly
He has great sympathy in him. Well capable of understanding and empathizing with human weakness and strength. For he experienced and in testing, but he remained sad. This empathy and quality sets him apart from all other praise. A special relationship with God. Thou art my son today, my begotten. A priesthood that is eternal and superior to the order of all people. And a mediator of a new covenant. A better covenant between God and humanity. His role as high priest involves offering himself as the perfect sacrifice, bringing forgiveness and peace. Yet, the new covenant and the context of the Bible refers to the concept found in both. All the new testament. You see, it particularly emphasizes the New Testament. It is associated with the teaching of Jesus. The Bible says it establishes a new relationship between God and man. The ideal of the new context. Covenant is rooted in the Old Testament, where the prophet Jeremiah and the book of and the writings of Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, tells a time when God will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The passage reads as follows. Oh, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jews, not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward part and write it in their heart. will be their God and they shall be my people. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them and to the greatest I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. In the New Testament, God goes even further to fulfill Jeremiah. Prophecy. Well, God said he'll his law in their inward made it in their hearts. Jeremiah 31, 33. And they shall be his people. We can see the light up in the resurrection of feeling. The new covenant. Through his sacrifice, providing a way for people to be reconciled with God through faith in him. This emphasizes in the accounts of the last where Jesus speaks of representing his blood, the new covenant. Matthew 20, 
28, Mark 14, 20, Luke 20. A new and everlasting covenant between God and him fulfilled through the life and life of Jesus Christ. A covenant of grace and forgiveness. A fulfillment of the law. The Bible says on the night of his betrayal, Jesus had his last meal with his disciples. He knew he would soon be betrayed by what a man was omniscient. Which lets us know betrayal shall come. But just as betrayal shall come, the Holy Spirit will override our life and we shall be resurrected. The Bible says, Look, the bread, commune with them and said, This is my body which was given for you on and after he had taken up he said take and drink the blood that was shed for you. remission of sins the shedding of blood there could be no remission Drink. The cup as representing his blood. It shall never lose his that we might have hope yet in a dark and deceived world because of his birth that we can remember controversial yet even through his ministry of humility, divine enter to fulfill the prophecy. Even the opposite to remind us we will have odds, but God is stronger and able to fulfill even in those areas. He's able to empower and guide through his own spirit and fulfill all things. Lo, I am with you to the very end of the world. A reminder of the birth in a world of the came full of compassion, accessibility to all, no matter your social ability and divine intervention still exists in the lives for he is actively providentially engaged in the life created there is hope beyond sight through faith there is hope 
beyond human understanding because he lives. There is hope beyond comprehension of all humanity because there's an empty grave. There is hope and empowerment because of the shedding of the that restored and atoned all believers who would submit and acknowledge that he's just not a high priest, Lord and Savior of your life. There is hope a greater expectation for life abundant as we journey this life. As we don't journey it alone. The excellence of the that resides in the earthly earth. May you remember reason of our celebration of a greater expectation a birth that brought light and hope and a dark world of deception a birth that brought a better way of living full of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Destroyed the works of the adversary. Ascended high and placed his word in our heart and in our mind, our inner being through the impartation of the Holy Know him, love him, and be his vest of honor as we please him and he pleasures. Never forget his life. He lives. Never forget character, his attributes. He has the within our life. Never forget his humility. I able to do exceed uh, all that we could ever do or even ask for. Let us pray. Yes. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for this celebration. A celebration of hope, a celebration of divine intervention. You came into the world, um, endowed with great power, wisdom, and knowledge to bring hope in a dark world of deception. You show the express image of the Father, full of compassion and power. You work miracles. You show that there was nothing too great for you, nothing too hard. And you made yourself accessible to all social economic status. Go 
so high priest that it reigns eternally. Restoring and through atonement that believers back life back to God. And Father, we thank you just because of who you are. We thank you, God, for the gift, the gift of life. We hold you dear in our heart, rejoicing. That there's no greater gift than the gift you give. Something that money and the world can't take. And we are honored for you'll never leave us nor forsake us as we celebrate your birth. Let us celebrate it in a way that brings you in. And all that we do, do for the glory of God. That we might remember you are the high priest and to see you in our behalf. As we rejoice in your birth. As we rejoice and knowing who you are, as we rejoice and accept your gift of life, we honor you and we worship you. We thank you for being who you are, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the great. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for giving your life, sharing your life daily in our life. Thank you for having a celebration of your life. We commit, rededicate, for being your inheritance. And as we celebrate the sacred occasion of your birth, we celebrate it in humility. We honor you as the king of glory. We thank you for your atonement. We thank you for fulfilling all that was to restore these earthly vessels. Thank you for the impartation of the Holy Thank you for the fellowship with you. And may all know that you're there by And no matter how great or how little of resources you find themselves with, you are the ultimate greatest resource and eternal resource that can bring peace and joy in the midst of all. May we never forget what this is all about. May we have the best, the most blessed celebration in as we honor the King for all that you've done great grace. May everything that you give May it be accepted upon 
to show you as the living May it be manifest through the impartation of your Holy Spirit to see you as the high priest in your life as we continue access the holy of holies that you've made. Father, we thank for the, of the celebration. May we never forget what may we never forget. We never forget what you did. Let this be a remember a celebration that draws all close to you, more dependent upon. You. Let it be celebrated the way you is. And Jesus, may we, amen, amen, a birth of hope in a dark that came and fulfilled the prophecy of to deliver his people. Full of compassion and sensibility, totally available to all things. Adorned in humility, but strengthened in the power of God, fulfilling all prophecy. Given an identification, a clarification, authenticity of who we are because of the blood covenant that draws to the power of God that changes life. A divine intervention is what Jesus a divine intervention. Always remember he's a divine intervention. And anything that we go through, remember the divine intervention. One that can take everything and work it out for God. One that can present you for exceeding joy, the only wise, eternal, and more wisdom. Wise. A divine intervention. Makes no difference where you at. He's a divine. Makes no difference what you're going through. He's a divine intervention. He can keep you in prison. He can establish and settle and work. He can take whatever you're going and intervene. And when God intervenes, there's no principalities, no power, no spiritual, no rulers in high place that can change God's ordained will for you. 
No device. For the counsel of God shall stand. Know your identification through divine. The world wants to identify. The world wants to entangle and trap. But God might have light that you might have liberty be free and Christ through his divine earth that gave so much hope and a dark world of deception praise the hope Freely yield to the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And may this Christmas season, may this Christmas celebration, Christ, Jesus, celebration of a birth that brought much love, so much love, so much peace, and joy, and truth, the spirit of truth. Forever lasting, change your life. A, a hope, a love, that spirit true, that will never leave you. Norfolk. Let this be the greatest love of all as you celebrate your Christmas. The greatest gift. See it through the eye. Divine intervention. Well, we are appreciative of our Lord and Savior that lives. Even when we exchange personal gifts, give your life to the one who came to give you a good And all these things will be added unto you. Know the joy of the Lord. Give the love as you abide in the peace of Celebrate. Celebrate. Nothing wrong with celebrating and be thankful for his celebration of his birth. He was so um, so perfect. And it was truly divine intervention. Remember the communion. Remember the blood. Remember the Holy Spirit baptism. Remember his life. Remember his victory. Remember his restoration. Remember giving. Ability. Remember his love, his mercy, and all 
that he has to offer. Let every king give by your man. Reflect. A deeper purpose of God's giving. Things brought Jesus gives. They had a deeper purpose. Let everything we receive a deeper purpose to remind of his divine of always fulfilling all this. Amen. Amen. Amen.